my first question that I'm so curious about, especially after having seen the movie, so I have an opinion on it myself, what do you think is the best place in the theater to sit to watch this film? Depends on the format you're watching. So if you're, you saw it 70 mil yes. IMAX. So in those screens, those traditional uh, massive, very tall IMAX screens, um, I like to be about in the middle, uh, about a third of the way down from the top. So it's a little further back than I would sit in a regular theater, uh, but that way you're about just above the center line height wise. So the, the viewpoint is great and the sound, the low end in particular, the bassy sort of notes, it kind of rolls towards the back. So that's a great place to be. It's about where I was. So okay. yeah, my ears are still ringing a little bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then but you it, were in the right spot. I would agree completely. And so talking about IMAX 70 millimeter, I mean, yeah. What is it about that format that makes it the way to see Oppenheimer? Well, IMAX uh, 70 millimeter film is, it's the highest quality imaging format that's ever been developed. Um, it's been around a long time, but it's never been surpassed or even had anything come near it. Um, so where you can find a presentation like that, we've got about 30 of those prints uh, going out across the world. Um, and what it gives you is the sharpest, clearest, image possible. I liken it to sort of 3D without the glasses. Mm -hmm. So you're immersed in the image, the screen disappears. Um, IMAX film cameras and those IMAX film projectors, they give you a format that's the closest analogy to the way the eye sees the world that we've ever come up with. Uh, so for that reason, I mean, often we shoot landscapes and action with it, uh, those kind of things. Um, but for human faces, for, for seeing the way we look into somebody's eyes, uh, it's it's the greatest format for that. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that as well because I think when people think Oppenheimer plus IMAX, they mm -hmm. think bomb detonation. That's going to be a big moment in IMAX. Yeah. But a lot of this is a character study. It's tight shots on faces. It's dialogue-heavy scenes. Can you talk to me a little bit more about how IMAX enhances those moments as well? Well, Hoyter van Hoyter, my director of photography and myself, when we talked about how to shoot this film, I was giving him a script that I'd written in the first person. So, you know, it sort of say, it says, you know, I came in, I sat down, I looked across the table, you know. I was trying to show Killian when he took on the role and everybody involved, including Hoyter, the commitment that we had to subjectivity. We really want to tell the entire story from his point of view. We really want to feel what he's feeling, see what he's seeing. Um, and so we've used IMAX in the past for heavy action sequences and things like that. And we knew that it was going to give us the Trinity sequence, which we knew had to be a showstopper. Um, it was going to give us the extraordinary landscapes of New Mexico, this, this barren landscape where they built this secret city where they had to, to put the Manhattan Project together. Um, but we also talked about the intimate moments and what's it going to be like? Is it going to help us get into his head? If we can put that camera, you know, six inches from Killian's nose and just with absolute clarity look into his eyes, look into his soul, uh, is it going to help us take the audience into his point of view. And I think it does. And I think it helps us tell a story where this most complicated of figures, you're coming to understand him more than judge him, if you know what I mean. We're not standing outside him judging what he did. We're going through this experience with him uh, and, you know, really empathizing with that and really having an incredible experience doing it, I think. And in terms of IMAX in general, obviously you're no stranger to it, but is there a moment in your career that you can pinpoint as that's when I fell in love with IMAX? I first saw uh, IMAX uh, in museums. Uh, the Museum of Science and Industry in Chicago had an Omnimax theater. That's the domed mm -hmm. screen version of IMAX. Uh, and I remember watching incredible documentaries there and wondering why no one had taken that technology and applied it to motion picture. Uh, making, you know, studio filmmaking. Uh, and by the time we got around to The Dark Knight, there was a network of IMAX theaters outside of museums. Um, there are still great theaters in museums, but they're also in the multiplex, they were everywhere. But they were just blowing up 35 millimeter films, your regular movies, blowing them up for that big screen. Uh, and so at that point, it felt like I could go to IMAX, go to the studio and say, okay, what if we try this as a sort of grand experiment. We'll try and shoot certain sections of the film using those IMAX film cameras. And, um, you know, the results were, we all felt very remarkable. It's a really extraordinary format to work with. Uh, and so I've used it really ever since. 
And then what do you think about the contrast between the subject matter of this film, which is so harrowing and some might say terrifying, mm. and the fact that it's a summer blockbuster that so many people are excited to see and be entertained by? I think entertainment is a complicated word when it applies to serious subject matter. Oppenheimer's story obviously embraces some of the most awful elements of human existence and human history. But to me, the word entertainment, when you, you think about motion pictures, it's about engagement, it's about interest. And I think cinema has always historically been able to entertain people in a variety of different ways, not necessarily you know, fun and laughs and all the rest. Sometimes it's about engagement, it's about being in a story and experiencing the emotions of those characters and going on an incredible ride. This character story, Oppenheimer's story, is the most dramatic story I know of. And harrowing though it is, um, I think you come out the other side feeling that you've experienced something. And, and really that for me is what blockbuster cinema at its best is really aimed at, at doing. It can happen in a number of different ways. Yeah, and there seem to be, at least I felt, threads of optimism throughout the movie too. Yeah. Perhaps some might say a naive optimism on Oppenheimer's part about world peace because of the atomic bomb. Can you talk to me a little bit about that? I think Oppenheimer had a very idealistic view of certain things and certain ways in which the technology he had helped unleash on the world could be controlled or put to better use. Um, and there are different ways of looking at his legacy. It's complicated because some of it seems naive, some of it has been borne out. Uh, his concern with arms, the arms race and how that would play out, the idea of mutually assured destruction, that it would prevent global conflict like World War I, World War II. Um, you know, there are things that he was the first to say that have been borne out, uh, but it's a very complicated legacy and it's really a film and a story about consequences. Um, and the consequences of his actions and what he was involved with uh, will be reckoned with for the rest of time. What are three words that you would use to describe your film, Oppenheimer? Ooh, three words. I would say his story is exciting, but I would say it was also full of paradox. And I think ultimately it's haunting. Yeah, I would agree with those. And lastly, is there any technology or event today that you think we might look back on in the future the way that we look back on the Manhattan Project today? I think the Manhattan Project is somewhat singular in the threat, the immediate threat that it poses to, to humankind, and that's worth bearing in mind. But having said that, I've had a lot of conversations over the last few months with people involved in uh, artificial intelligence, for example, who they literally talk about their Oppenheimer moment. They see this as their Oppenheimer moment. They're looking to his story to see what guidance or what indicators it could give for what responsibility they bear for a technology that can have unintended consequences. Um, and I think, I think they're right to look to his story uh, as a cautionary tale. Um, but I'd be lying if I said I thought the film presented any kind of easy answers to, to these dilemmas. But having people think about it in the right way and think about the potentially devastating and serious results of a new technology, I think is a very healthy impulse. Yeah, I think people will leave with a lot of questions from this movie in addition to a good amount of answers, but it leaves you with a lot to think about. I think if I've done my job right, there are resonances to, to a movie. Um, the film's not didactic. It's not trying to say there are clear-cut answers. It's trying to have you understand Oppenheimer rather than judge Oppenheimer. And that leaves you with some of the trickiest questions imaginable at, at the end of things. But uh, hopefully we're telling the story in an engaging and, and sympathetic way that, that it, it stays with you. And great to see Killian in a lead role as well. After all the times that you've worked yeah. with him, to see him carry a movie is, is phenomenal. It was fun to be able to call him up and say, this is the one, this is where you get to take center stage. And we're depending on you to draw the audience through this, this person's experience. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you very much for your time. Anything else you want to let you. us know or anything you'd say to people who think, hey, this is a historical movie, I can Google it. <laughs> <laughs> I No, I'd, I'd say that it, it's funny as I talk about the film, I keep 
and, and sometimes I'm, I'm talking to the, the people who are interviewing me and saying, please, no spoilers, which seems absurd when you're talking about a piece of history that you can Google, but it's the way in which you experience a story and certain aspects of it and the way in which it's handled that, that I think ha have a, a lot of potential to surprise audiences.